I shall be helping out throughout proceedings. But if you've all got a program, if you haven't got one, then we can get one to you in the coming weeks or so. Not a problem. But as due to the weather as being a bit um, not so kindly, I will move the proceedings quite forward quite quickly. And I will ask Miss Theresa Musgrove, one of the relative of the fireman who was attending during the World War II, to come and do her readings, please. Thank you, Theresa. Two parties are occupied during the night. 
and as many as 16 parties in action at one time during the peak of the activity. One of the first men I met, he wrote, was Mr. Arthur Dade, a post warden, who was on duty when the bomb fell. His wife and children were reported missing, and he was blown through the door of the post and badly shaken. But after phoning for help, he stuck to his post all night and worked for several days after the tragedy until he was literally boarded off duty. Then he had no home to go to, or his house had been demolished. There was Dr. Livingston, who, ignoring the danger of the situation, called under one demolished house to give an injection to an injured man. Nor must I forget the 20-year-old heroine, Peggy Stanley, who was visiting friends when the bomb fell. The house was wrecked, but Peggy held up heavy debris and prevented it burying other people, including Mrs. Corner, his daughter, 15-year-old girlfriend, and Peggy's 15-year-old sister. Afterwards, the mayor, Alderman A. A. Nar, said, Bruised and battered they may be, and their little homes in ruins, but there's no whimpering or grousing. There is the grim determination that Nazi barbarians shall not get us down. Here we have people reflecting the real British spirit. They are of the breed that a dozen Hitlers will never smash. There is one large space where houses used to stand, and in the centre of this still stands the rough cross passion from a damaged tree on the side. That cross was erected very shortly after the tragedy, and around it was held a memorial service a few days later, a service which has become an annual institution. In the words of the then Royal Dean of Hendon, the Reverend Norman Boyd, the last word shall not be with the destroyer. That is the meaning of our service and of the simple cross under which we stand. Such scenes of desolation as this form a terrible monument to the wickedness of those who pursue brute force. Without reference to the God of righteousness, justice, and life, before whom they must one day render account their deeds. Hitler, Goering, Goebbels, Himmler, these and their like have run their span. Their day to render their account has come. But the little people of London suburbs whom they sought to smash live on, bearing the unquenchable torch of freedom. And the rough wooden cross at West End remains as a symbol of the spirit that prevailed against the greatest peril of oppression humanity has ever had to face. Sorry about the weather. Um, next we have Sally Hardy. She's one of the relatives. She'll come over to this place and say a few words. Alright, All right, Sally. And she's bringing her husband. <laughs> okay. I'll leave you. Sally. About a year ago, I was watching the BBC, the one show, when I saw uh, an item about a housing I quickly realised that I knew the area. As a small child, my father would bring me here and tell me stories about his mother, brother-in-law and niece, who all died during the air raid on the 13th of February 1941. It was difficult for him and my mother, as they went round the makeshift mortuary looking for the family. Dad always said the hardest thing was going to the hospital to tell his sister Gladys, who had survived the air raid, that her husband Wally, daughter Jean, who was only four, and her mother Sarah had died. As a child, these were stories about people I never knew. As I got older, I realised how important it was to remember people, places and dates. The people that lost their lives that night were just ordinary people doing ordinary things. My grandmother Sarah was going to look after her granddaughter Jean, as Auntie Gladys and Uncle Wally were going out to celebrate, him getting a longer leave. Apparently his ship had been delayed in the dockyard. Like others, they were in the wrong place at the wrong time. On behalf of my family, and families like mine, I'd like to thank Nathan Smith from Barrett Development, Georgie McGarland from Hardback, Jasmine Parsons, and all the other people involved in putting this service together. 
It would have meant a lot to my late father and his sisters, just knowing that people cared and that their loved ones had not been forgotten. Thank you. All right, yeah, um, sorry about the weather. Um, thank you very, very much, Sally, that was very moving. The unveiling and the memorial, the blessing by Father Damon, the curate from, uh, from St Mary's Church in Hendon, will take place now, and then after that we'll have a minute silence, and then words from Keith Peacock. Okay, so, if you, young me, you're going to do favour we come here this day to commemorate all those whose lives are remembered here. Bless this memorial to their memory and give us the courage to honour the past by living lives worthy of such greater sacrifice. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Right, we can have the, um, all the people who are reading the, the victims' names come up, uh, that would be very grateful, please. They could come up all up together. Jacqueline Aldis, Peggy Joan Eva Beasley, Mark 
Sarah Luxton, Frederick Model, Stanley Nolan. Helen Alice Nicholson, William Parker, Norman Pearman, Violet May Ponder, Brian Edgar Peacock, and Annie Peacock, no remains found, Gerald Preston, George George Gloss, Elizabeth Stray. Ethel Bobby Arthur Timms, James Wilkinson, Richard Albert Walters, Elaine Minnie Walton, Edith Mary Walker, Isabella Wilkinson, Walter Thomas Wilson, and Roy George Woodbridge. William, William Moffat, John Moffat, Minnie Moffat, Blanche Lillian Hilda Moffat, Bertie William Bradley, Kitty Margaret Bradley, Kitty Maud Bradley, Camilla Blanche Bradley. Um, uh, thank everyone for, for reading, and I know Jackie got upset because he's, he's one of her relatives that was involved as well. So, I think everybody here deserves real credit for that. Now we will go for a million minute silence, which, um, has anybody got a time piece? Because I haven't got one, sorry. <coughs> You're okay. Right, but whoever Father Damon will go for a minute silence. Now we have Keith Peake, who's also had relatives here, who's involved in our side of the way. Thank you. Um, I lost my grandmother and my uncle um, in the front. My grandfather and father. I missed the bond by about 15 or 20 minutes. My grandfather had uh, left the house to um, go to a night shift with a steam engine driver and my father was courting my mother up in Hendon so they missed it by about 20 minutes. Um, the general consensus is that my grandmother was uh, more or less in the epicenter of the bomb because nothing was ever found of her and my uncle Brian Peacock, after whom I named, was found uh, several hundred yards away unmarked in a tree, he'd been killed by the blast. Um, so at least there was um, there was somebody to bury anyway, which some of the families that uh, suffered in that tragedy. Thank you, Keith. The Lord's Prayer. Um, Before we get to 
the Lord's time. Uh, Reverend Sean Saunders from um, the Methodist Church. Sir Pendleton has been coming to give us a reading for the Psalm. Psalm 16. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, whatever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, Turn back, you mortals, for a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, or like a watch in the night. You sweep them away, they are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed, in the evening it fades and withers. For we are consumed by your anger, by your wrath we are overwhelmed. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your countenance. For all our days pass away under your wrath, our years come to an end like a sigh. The days of our life are seventy years, or perhaps eighty if we are strong. Even then their span is only toil and trouble. They are soon gone and we fly away. Who considers the power of your anger? Your wrath is as great as the fear that is due you. So teach us to count our days, that we may gain a wise heart. Turn, O Lord, how long? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, so we may rejoice and be glad in all our days. Make us glad as many days as you have afflicted us, and as many years as we have seen evil. Let your work be manifest to your servants, and your glorious power to their children. Let the favour of the Lord our God be upon us, and prosper for us the work of our hands. O oh, prosper the work of our hands. Thanks be to God. We have gathered on this memorial day to remember all those from this community who were caught up in the tragic events of the Second World War. I remember too those who were killed in action, the bereaved and the lost, the families who were shattered, the wounded, maimed and injured, those who held in silence unspeakable memories of warfare. I remember those who fought and those who remain anxiously at home in this community. Let us pray that God will heal all the memories and speak a word of peace to us and bring us his healing. Let us pray. <coughs> Lord God, Father of all, we pledge ourselves to serve you and this neighborhood, to bring relief to all who are in need, and comfort to the sad, the lonely, and distressed. Keep us ever mindful of the struggles and achievements of former generations, and of this place where we make our home, now and in the days to come. Hear us this day as we remember and pray for the souls of those who died in this place 75 years ago. As we come to honour their memory, we pray that they may know the joy of your eternal paradise, that all the blessed saints might. Strengthen our hearts and hands, and our minds, O Lord, work together for peace, to serve you in one another, and to seek your kingdom above all things. We pray that your will may be seen to be done, and your kingdom come. Through Jesus Christ, in whose words we sum up these and all our prayers as we say together, our Father, who art in heaven, heaven be done in thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation to give us from evil. If anybody wants to lay any tributes at all, then by all means do so. Do you want to do that first?
I will now go I will now read the poem which was written especially for the people here who died on that tragic event and for the people who suffered afterwards on that same event. As I read it, I would like, rather than people actually reading it on the phones, it's just to close your eyes and just to think about the words and to what memories actually come flooding in. It would be really nice. <laughs> to those who lived, to those who died, to all who suffered loss, snug tightly in thy mother's bosom, dearest Mother Earth. Least one forget, whilst none should not, we miss our soulful tie. Cause commiserate, congratulate, consonate with thine time. Let still our minds and hold our thoughts for loved ones near and far. The lives fading fast, lives not yet born, be us their guiding, brightening, burning, ever loving star. Sadness reigned that February eve in fading winter light. With one deadly blow where tendon was smite, left misery, pain, and broken heart. When the helper H.E. travel one with bomb gone, turned, returned, leaving in its wake upon the ground that horrifying sound, removed what could never be replaced. No air raid sounding, no searchlight finding, that one single bomber in that deadly cold winter sky. Evening paper, cried little Charlie Watkins, the paper boy. Get your papers here! His usual cry would always attract the local passers-by. With flashbang, whoosh, these newspapers were set loose. No last goodbye. His time had ended, like everybody else who died in this war still deserves to be remembered. Neath the earth peaks, earth eruption, hills fell with destruction, safe homes now the takers of life, coughing smoke shard with soot, with dust and burning embers, the locals did not flee. They mustered strength, grew from courage and desperation to find life. They dug with their own bare hands through chips and charred, smouldering debris. The cry to Ali, the neighborhood found worse. Man, woman, and child had one thought, had one choice. Their search for ruins would not end to all her loved ones, neighbors, and friends. The wardens came running. The fire came clanging and joined the local's noble deed. We cover man, woman and child who in their lifetime had smiled, brought joy upon this earth within this community. West Hendon Deerfield CRU Workingmen's Club became a temporary hospital, their hope, their life-saving hub. For the many cut short, loved, one, loved, one, loved one's words would grace. In Burn Oak, the Royal Oak Battle Cruiser became their temporary resting place. Eight souls never found, remained in the ground, could not be brought back from that deadly attack. Deserved from the public, like the others who fell, that war, respectful and equal respect. Time never stands still, new houses were built, and the locals held yearly sermons since ceased without end. The locals grew old, and their stories they hold are passed on to their families and friends. The bomb dropping reason remains a public mystery. Let this not cover up. Priceless treasury, our own memories, and our local history. To all those involved and those who were touched on that sad, painful, cold winter day, the heartache they felt and suffered 
the rest of their lives as they carried on with their days and their nights. How heavy their cost is not who and what they lost, it's the strength to live on we stand and applaud. In memory of those here before taken to heart, be remembered forevermore. Thank everyone for coming and attending here. You can now remove yourselves to the more comfortable position of the community centre where we are really hoping that people will chat and will share the memories so that they live on. There will also be a book of remembrance for people to sign and if they want to put comments or anything down, we would love to have it. We also want to make sure this isn't just a one-off. The people who come today can share the memories we hope that will be wrong. Oh, yeah, I'll just pass you over to the blessing. Oh, sorry. All right. God grant to the living grace to the departed rest, to the church and the queen and the commonwealth, peace and concord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, this day and forever. Amen. Amen. Okay. Okay, thank you guys for uh, joining us. Remember this. Ah, what's happening? Okay. I'll see you later. Uh, please, uh, please, um, yeah, just please uh, uh, share this to people uh, on it. Especially what's happening.